is Roy Jones, pound for pound, the finest fighter in the world today. A chance for you to try and judge for yourselves as he takes on Mike McCallum for what's being called the WBC Interim Light Heavyweight Championship. fighter of course a champion at three weights light middleweight middleweight and wbc light heavyweight so here comes the man of the moment is roy jones in your opinion pound for pound the finest fighter in the world steve collins the wbc super wbo super middleweight champion will argue strongly against that he's ranked of course number one by the independent world boxing rankings as a super middleweight this it's his first step into the light heavyweight class, where Mike McCallum is ranked number six. This is going to be a 12-round contest, of course. And here comes Roy Jones, robbed, of course, in the Olympic final against Park C. Hun. One of the worst decisions on record. This match coming from the Ice Palace in Tampa, Florida, Jones's home state. And uh, talking of Florida, the WBC was snubbed by the Florida Commission. The Florida Commission have appointed the three judges for this. The WBC, on the other hand, have actually installed three other officials that have got front row seats. Ladies and gentlemen, Yared Productions and Square Incorporated in association with HBO Sports and Budweiser, the undisputed King of Beers presents from the Ice Palace in Tampa, Florida, my hometown, main event, fire on ice, 12 rounds for the vacant WBC Light Heavyweight Championship of the world. Ring officials assigned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Juan Sanchez. Your judges at ringside are from Miami, Florida, Rick Bays. Also from Miami, Paul Herman. And from Tallahassee, Florida, Jay Cassis. Your third man in the ring, referee from Tampa, Florida. So there's the confusion with the judges. They're the three WBC judges, as I said before. The three previously mentioned were Ladies appointed by the Florida State Commission. Introducing now the principals first in the red corner to my left, wearing the red trunks, black trim, weighing 173 pounds. He is undefeated in 33 professional bouts, 29 wins by way of knockout. Pensacola, Florida, and is ranked by the Bible of Boxing Ring Magazine as the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, the IBF Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Roy Jones Jr. Jones Jr. His opponent in the blue corner wearing the powder blue trunks, white trim, weighing 175 pounds. His professional record, 49 victories, three defeats, one draw. He has 36 wins by way of knockout. He hails from Kingston, Jamaica, but now makes his home in Las Vegas, Nevada.
things out of out of the way. The formalities are done. It's now down to Jones and McCullum. 12 three-minute rounds. Referee for this one, Brian Gary. This WBC World Championship bout at all times. I want you to obey my command to break. If you score a knockdown, go to the neutral corner. Do not come out till I signal. Protect yourself at all times. Don't use your head as a weapon. No rabbit punches or low blows. Shake hands. Come out boxing at the belt. So here we go then. And uh, Jones has made no secret the fact that uh, he rates McCallum very highly for Mike's past achievements. And I was there the night that Mike McCallum was beaten by Fabrice Tiozo in Lyon in France. I thought he was well beaten on points over 12 rounds. He even hit the deck early in the fight, very briefly. McCallum coming off a win. And of course, Roy Jones is unbeaten in 33 pro fights to date and some very good form on his record. Roy Jones have made no secret the fact that he'd like to face Mike Tyson at heavyweight. Roy Jones has got such fast hands and such powerful punches when they connect. His last defense was against Bryant Brannan, and Brannan was completely shelled. He could have been stopped in the first round, it went into the second. But in some ways, Roy can be his own worst enemy. If he's not given the right amount of money or the right kind of accolades, he can be a bit lackluster. And in fact, he saved the most important fight of his life to turn in his worst performance. That, by the way, against Bernard Hopkins for the vacant IBF crown back in uh, 1993. He, he won quite handily, but uh, looked pretty poor on the way most of the time. Claimed he had a damaged hand going into the fight. Mike McCallum, of course, one of the... Uh, sweetest box fighters of the last decade. He turned pro way back in 1981. Well, Roy Jones is obviously up for this one, and he'll need to be. Any chinks in his armour? McCallum's the kind of man to find them out. <laughs> and what's overlooked, of course, is Roy Jones' ability to absorb a punch, as we saw against Murky Sosa. Sosa beaten in two rounds at the start of this year. And uh, he caught Roy Jones a couple of times. Jones dropped his hand, smiled, and just skipped away. Well, pretty uh, safe start there from Roy Jones. Speed of punch winning in round one. The the world champion thereafter. And first became WBA champion at light middleweight back in 1984, beating Sean Mannion. This is round two. Nice left hook from Jones. And a measure of McCallum's ability and danger was a second round knockout of the fearsome punching Julian Jackson back in uh, 86. Nice work from Jones. Switching head and body with quick punches. Unlikely that referee Brian Gary will have too much to do in this one.
McCallum, of course, a top-class amateur. At the age of 16, became Jamaican champion. And actually represented Jamaica twice in the Olympic Games. The first time in 76 in Montreal. Beat in the quarter-finals that year. And then 1980, he should have boxed in Moscow, but uh, developed appendicitis just days before the competition started and had to be withdrawn. <laughs> A veteran of 17 World Championship fights, but getting caught over the top by Jones's right. <laughs> and further measure of McCallum's previous form. A tenth round knockout of Milton McCrory, a fifth round knockout, he absolutely starts Don Curry. Well, not often you see Jones backed up. But he used it so well, Jones. Not a bad start to the fight for Mike McCallum. He's got into his stride quite early on. And of course, Jones, a good starter when he's in the mood. The last few seconds of round two. McCallum's had his moments, but once again, Jones won the round. McCallum getting Jones on the ropes. Well, Jones, they're quite happy to be there. McCallum didn't really connect with much. Round three. Roy Jones in the red against Mike McCallum for the bogus WBC Interim Light Heavyweight Championship. And McCallum has taken his approach to this fight very seriously. Back in 89, Harold Graham facing Mike McCallum for the vacant WBA middleweight championship as once again they both let rip here with both hands. I thought Harold Graham, who by the way is on a comeback, won that night by one point. But uh, it was a majority decision for McCallum. Six years ago, McCallum crossed swords with Ireland's Steve Collins, the reigning WBO super middleweight champion. And they outpointed Collins over 12 rounds, and thereafter beat Michael Watson in 11. And trying to weave a bit of the McCallum magic here on Roy Jones. Jones not at all bothered by this attack from McCallum. People don't really know Jones for his defensive qualities. But he does take a wallop. And of course, Roy is so dangerous. When you unleash a full-blooded attack, he really does find the smallest of holes to knock counter punches through. McCallum fighting the only way he knows how, trying to put pressure on Jones and not doing badly. And of course, this Florida crowd absolutely idolised Roy Jones.
Brooks. But that looked like a fair round for Mike McCallum. He might have just nicked that one. James Tony got the nod on points. And if you're wondering who McCallum beat to become WBC line heavyweight champion, well, it was Jeff Harding, the, the Australian. On points over 12 rounds just a couple of years ago. And I do remember when uh, McCallum made his first defence of the light heavyweight title against Carl Jones at the London Arena. He looked absolutely superb. Granted, Jones was not a top-class contender, but McCallum could not have looked better. Jones, of course, a former IVF middleweight champion, made one defence of that title and made five defences of his super middleweight crown. Steve Collins, of course, a very keen spectator of this particular match. And when I had the temerity to suggest that Collins was only number two in the world to Jones. Steve was uh, most offended. He's been trying for quite some time to get Jones in the ring. And of course, Nigel Benn's chance came and went. Chris Eubank's chance came and went. shots there for McCallum. Weren't really thrown with too much conviction. And it's ironic that Mike McCallum should look quite uh, a wee bit, in fact, quite a lot bigger than Roy Jones here. Don't forget, McCallum was a former light middleweight champion, boxing out light heavyweight. Stone and a half difference, of course, and Jones started his professional career as a middle. Once again, nice fast hands from Roy Jones to win round four. <laughs> Having the odd moment in the fourth round, but overall, Jones was in control. So this is round five. Roy Jones Jr. Pretty stern upbringing by his father. And Roy now spends his spare time fishing and breeding fighting cocks, which seems to be the most bizarre of hobbies. Nice work from Jones. Slightly low then for McCallum. No hard feelings. As illustrated by the jig from Jones. Again, good defensive work then by Jones, and of course he's still the super middleweight champion of the IBF coming into this fight.
And I remember interviewing Riddick Bowe last year, or was it this year? And uh, sat beside Riddick Bowe was the reigning WBC light heavyweight champion Fabrice Tiozo. And Bowe was actually quite surprised to learn that at that time Tiozo weighed more than Bowe. And uh, I've said for quite some time now, I don't think Tiozo can make the light heavyweight limit again. Although he's making all the right noises that he can, I think the chances of him defending his light heavyweight title are quite slim. And McCallum, of course, is having trouble here pinning Jones down. And being able to set himself to land more than one or two hard punches. Very difficult. Nice work by Jones. Lovely fast left hook. And again, lovely fast punches from Jones, especially the right hand there. Good round from him. Of the scheduled 12 rounds, main event. And Jones on my card is 49 points to 46 in front. I thought McCallum stole round three. And of course, Roy Jones doesn't lose many rounds. Lost barely a handful in his entire career to date. The only man, of course, to knock out Sugar Boy Malinga, when Malinga was quite a decent fighter back in 1993. Of course, he's completely gone now. Also, did Thomas Tate in two, Tony Bird in one, and then that wonderful win over Vinny Pazienza, the Pasmanian Devil, beaten in six rounds. Came up, Roy. Roy Jones says, was that low? <laughs> and it's ironic, six judges are scoring this match. It's a three appointed by the uh, Florida State Athletic Commission. Make Jones the winner, and the three appointed by the WBC, side with McCallum. What on earth will they do? That just goes to show you how ridiculous the sport of boxing at this level has become today. Particularly good right hand earlier in this round. Well, I'm not quite sure what that meant by the referee. Don't post him. Well, Mike McCallum might just be nicking this round as well. It's very close and very tight. But of course, the Americans, they do like the aggressor. Jones just backing off here, regrouping, taking a bit of time to see what's on his plate. And as a result, looks like Mike McCallum might just have taken it. Mike McCallum might just have nicked the second round on my scorecard anyway. This is the halfway stage, round seven. And Roy Jones almost contemptible in the sixth round. Let's see what he's got up his sleeve here. A 
And whenever you see Mike, oh, good shot there by Jones. Whenever you see McCallum live, as it were, in the flesh, it really does give you quite a sensation of watching someone special, or at least someone who was special. Because there's no doubt about it, Mike McCallum, one of the, uh, the finest craftsmen of his game. Good work there from Roy Jones, catching McCallum unawares. McCallum went to work with a double left foot. Jones cracked him with the right. And McCallum looking fleshy at 12-7. Jones has said he's not happy at this weight. Good shot again from Jones. And there's a look of anxiety now crossing the face of McCallum. Jones is making McCallum look his age here. Jones, of course, 27 years of age, 13 years younger than McCallum. And Mike looks every inch of it, takes another big right from Jones. Jones starting to enjoy this now. Jones quite uh, content to draw McCallum in and he's not bothered about taking the odd punch. But making McCallum look very ordinary. And I was a big McCallum fan. And again, Jones cracks him with the right hand. and round for Jones after a bit of a lacklustre sixth back on top lovely left hook there by Jones and the right hand over the top and it's the kind of fighter who breaks your heart so Roy Jones then comes out for round eight still lots of respect between these two And of course, it's very difficult to decide today in an active era just who is pound for pound the best fighter in the world at the moment. I've narrowed it down to three. I wonder if you'd agree. I think Roy Jones has got to be up there with them. I think Oscar De La Hoya, regardless of the fragility of his chin, is there, along with Evander Holyfield, in no special order. But uh, I would imagine that those three will probably qualify in anyone's top three for best pound-for-pound pound fighter today. Of course, you've got some confusion with the welterweights. Pernell Whitaker, Phoenix, Trinidad, Ike, Quarty. I could go on, but uh, you know what I mean. Until they sort themselves out, we just won't know who the best welterweight is. And he could well join the list or replace one of the three just mentioned. Of course, most of us regard the greatest fighter pound for pound in history as Sugar Ray Robinson. Nothing's happened, in my opinion anyway, to change that view in the last 10 years. Nor does it look likely to happen in the next 10 years, to be quite honest. And we've still not seen the best of Roy Jones. Go. 
<laughs> well, look at that. That's a, a difference in class between these two. McCallum landed five punches. You could count them all. Jones probably landed six or seven, and they were a blur. Speed of punch, such a major factor. McCallum never was a speedy kind of puncher, but when he threw a shot, it generally landed, and with some force. Hence the name, the body snatcher. But he's having all sorts of problems here against Roy Jones. I don't know why the crowd are booing. And again, Jones cracks over the right hand. Good round for Jones. Okay, roll. Number nine. Number nine, roll. Number nine, Mike. So round nine, then, after the scheduled 12 rounder. And of course, the question here is Roy Jones trying to establish himself in the higher weight division? Or is he just taking this fight to stay busy? but look to get back down to super middle where he probably belongs. <laughs> a lot was made, by the way, of Roy Jones playing basketball on the same day as, as his uh, title defense against Eric Luca. He actually only played for 15 minutes and scored five points. And Jones is so difficult to catch flush and catch clean. He's a... Uh, we don't quite know, of course, what Jones has got in the chin department until he does get tagged with a clean, hard punch. I mean, he's been hit before, without a doubt. But you just wonder if one of those concussive punches landed on that chin, what the result would be. But he boxes with such an air of confidence. And Jones is a very strong man, too. Good balance. And Jones has what I like to refer to as very good vision. He knows exactly where the opponent is. He knows what punch will land when he throws it. And McCallum there forced really to cuffing Jones around the side of the head. Punches against lesser men that will be getting through and telling. And again, Jones cracks in the right hand. And there's nothing wanting about McCallum. He's there for a punch-up. Jones, though, still very cool. And he's loving this, enjoying every moment. in the McCallum corner, hardly surprising. Once again, Jones jigging around in the corner there and just waxing the counter punches. This is round 10. Three to go. And 
Mike McCallum, of course, was around in the time. All 15 round world championship fights. And I bet he wishes those days were still here. I've got no doubt that Jones would get the distance. Lovely left hook from Jones, thrown from the waist. Of course, Junior Jones very recently beat the seemingly unbeatable Marco Antonio Barrera. I actually tipped Jones to win that one. So one of two world champions called Jones at the moment. And make no mistake, Mike McCallum has worked and trained very hard for this one, and he's being made to look very ordinary by Jones. But don't be fooled, McCa there's still a lot of Mike McCallum left. It's the calibre of Jones that makes Mike look ordinary. And so much, of course, is expected of Jones by these Florida fans. They think he's going to walk out, whack him on the chin, and it's all going to be over. Nice body punch. Nothing low there. Oh, and again, it's right on the chin. And McCallum taking it all like a man. My one major criticism of, Mc of Jones, he doesn't really plant his feet to land a hard shot, relies on speed. Oh, he's down. Well, you don't often see that in Mike McCallum's life. Only the second time in my experience he's ever hit the floor. Down there, the right hand flashed across. McCallum hit the floor. It was on the deck against Fabrice Tiozo. And this is only the second knockdown, as far as I'm aware, in Mike McCallum's illustrious career. So a 10 8 round then for Jones. And it's 98 91 on my card now in favor of the IBF Super Middleweight Champion Roy Jones campaigning here at light heavy. Penultimate round, this is the 11th. Well, Jones there slipping on water in his own corner. And very sensibly getting, sorry, in McCallum's corner. Getting McCallum's corner man to clear that up. It's too wet. Somebody get hurt. Well, Jones will have to find another corner to languish in now. So action resumes in round 11. Still slick. It's wet. It's wet. But watch that paint. Well, Roy Jones once again making Mike McCallum look like a, a gnarled old veteran who's just trying to uh, box from memory. And of course, McCallum coming off a win 
in June. He beat uh, Saadi Ali, the former German international champion, on points over 10 rounds in Germany. But of course, there's no such thing as an unbeatable fighter, as Roy Jones will find out down the line, no doubt about that. Nice right over the top from McCallum. And Jones, almost with the look of disdain on his face, just strolls away. And Roy Jones in superb condition. Beautifully tuned up for this. McCallum looking a bit fleshy. Once again, flashing combination there, catching McCallum. Oh, well, how did he keep his feet then? It's another good round for the master boxer. Look at that. Speed of punch there, the left hook from Jones. So 12th and final round then, and Mike McCallum has taken it all like a man. And he shaved his head, of course, because he didn't want the grey hairs to show. Bad to respect still between these two. Roy Jones in the red and black, out to increase his record to 34. Wins on the spin. It's not going to be a knockout. 29 have failed to hear the final bell. And a good many of those failed to hear the second bell. And of course, the night James Tony was completely humiliated by Roy Jones was quite something to fight in the crowd now. It really was something. James Tony didn't win a round. Of course, this crowd know they're watching greatness. Still, attention's focused on a punch-up in the crowd. McCallum looks like he's wading through mud. Yes, this is a, a derby winner against the cart horse, no doubt about that. Again, the rights from Jones. Jones even got time there to show the punch to McCallum before landing it. Well, this might just be Mike McCallum's final fight. Yes, it's been a bad night's work for McCallum. Not his fault, of course. There's a huge ball of talent in front of him in the shape of Roy Jones. And you can only do what you can do. I'm not even too sure if five or six years ago, the McCallum of that era would have coped with Jones today. And McCallum, one of the most respected fighters in the modern game. 
Last 10 seconds of the 12th and final round. Jones has skated it, and again, catching McCallum on the shim of the right hand, it almost went down. It's all over now. The old boy's been saved from the indignity of being knocked out, but Roy Jones wins by a street. to 111 in favour of Roy Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, Judge Paul Herman, Judge Jay Cassis, and Judge Rick Bays all score the bout 120, oh. 107. That's terrible. You. One twenty one oh seven. Every round against McCallum and won by two points. Well, that's not an accurate reflection of what we just saw, in my opinion. And of course, Mark Barrow there saying he's the new WBC champion. Not for me, he's not. Do you feel it was an easy fight for you? First of all, I thank God for the opportunity, for giving me the opportunity to come out here and doing all that I do. It was a terrific thing I had. And we had to turn out a great night. I'd like to congratulate this man. He has bribed me tonight. Uh, he did a terrific job. I had faith in him. Real was a great champion, but he still Don't got to come with a long way to go. Uh, Mike McCallum was not really hard for me. Mike is a technician, and it's like, why go out and take a crazy chance with a guy that I can outspeed and outbox, you know what I'm saying? I want to learn. I want to see the different shots coming at me. I haven't had a chance to be in the ring with someone as talented and skill-wise as Mike. What did he show you that some of your recent opponents didn't show you? He showed movement. He showed pressure. He had a great jab. You know, I could have blocked the jab more. I could have countered the jab more. But you know, I came into the fight with a bruised right hand, knew it coming in, so I wasn't going to come in and kill myself. Plus, I have a lot of respect for Mike McCallum. I could have faked him and hit him with the right hand all night long. I dropped him with it. I really didn't mean to drop. I just tried to throw a quick before he wouldn't count on me. He throws one punch that I throw a lot, which is a check hook. When a man comes at you, he throws the hook. I wasn't going to go in and get hit with hook on purpose and I know he's going to throw it. Are you comfortable at light heavyweight and looking forward to fighting some of the other light heavyweights out there? No, I'm not really comfortable at it. Uh, I'm a little small for light heavyweight, but I'm looking forward to fighting my fighting the bite. I don't care. Virgil Hill said some stuff today in the paper talking about only people I fought was James Tony and uh, Mike McCallum. Well, who has he fought? Tommy Hearns and he lost that. So, you know, if you go ahead and take care of your business, Virgil, when you come back, we can get it on. I'll be waiting. Just call my house. <laughs> So, great little interview there from Roy Jones. I hope you've enjoyed it. Ski jumping next, and of course, we've got some more boxing for you before Christmas. So, I'll hope you'll watch your local press for details of that.